Hey, listen, um, welcome once again to Skinny Black's Lounge. And as we always do about this time, suck a shit. Man, I was thinking. Uh oh. I don't often do this. Uh, I rarely give any relationship advice because two reasons. Uh, number one, people don't take it. And then number two, everybody grown. Okay, that's one of my rules of life. Everybody grown. So, you know, let grown people do what they do. But I was having a conversation and I was trying to explain this uh, to a young lady that this is uh, simple as chicken and biscuits. Right? So we all, we've been black our whole lives. You know, black people love fried chicken. Go to KFC. It's called Kentucky Fried Chicken. Now they got the size. Remember the mean greens? They don't have those no more, but I used to like right. the mean greens. Right. They got the green beans, got yeah. the mac and cheese, the nasty ass fries they got up there. And uh-huh. they got the biscuits. The biscuit is the number one side. Yes, sir. But it's still a side. It's not called Kentucky Fried Biscuits. It's called Kentucky Fried Chicken. And see, what's going on right now is a lot of these ladies, they, they the two piece, breast and wing, but they really a biscuit. <laughs> And I don't care how much butter and honey you put on it, you still a side dish, right? And this is what happens when these biscuits get two-piece attitude. So you delusional biscuits, you on some sucker shit. (laughs) Oh man, I don't know where you get this shit, bro. All right. <laughs> I got one more, man. All right, cool. Just roll into it. All right, cool. Today is another, also a special day because one thing we haven't done uh, up to this point, uh, I don't know what episode this will end up being <laughs> when this is aired. <laughs> But uh, at some point, uh, at no point in time up to now have we given out origin stories. And so today you'll get a chance, uh, a peek, sneak peek into um, into, the, into our experiences in life that brought us here and made us who we are today, uh, as we see it. And so uh, with that being said, I'll start with mine. As well you should. <laughs> so uh, real simple. Uh, born in LA, uh, my folks, mom is from Alabama, um, dad is from Ohio. Uh, they met here in LA. We don't have to go deep into that. Uh, but when they divorced, I was around two years old. My mom moved me back to Alabama. So this is what, when, when we think about how I got to this space, uh, just give some background. My mom, um, who has made transition now, um, uh, and years ago at this point um she was 5'11 and a half <laughs> uh, i'm 6'1 uh, and a half. uh <laughs> i'm actually six feet and three quarters but i just round up to 6'1 um and so what i being raised by her um basically nine months out the year um and i spent my summers out here in california in compton with my dad um she was a dominant figure in my life. I had some great, great uncles, great men in my life, but the the woman in my household, uh, she ruled with her iron fist. She was, yeah. So, and she was scary because she was 5'11 and a half. So, around the time I, be, when I, around 13 or 14, she started dating my eventual stepdad. My stepdad, this this dude was like six five. He was a huge cat, uh, which makes sense, right? Um, something shifted, so he would come over, and she would be like, "Hey, baby, um, what what do you what would you like to eat?" Um, man, she'd be rubbing his shoulder, and she'd be like, oh, "Want me to fix your plate, baby? Uh, you want me to run your bath for you?" Da, da, da. And I was like, who the fuck is this woman? <laughs> this mm-hmm. chick been banging on me for 13 years, man. I don't know this chick, right? And so the reason I bring up that example, and, and, I'll, and I'll dig into some more uh, uh, that connected to that, what, what that means. The reason I dig into that is because that shaped how, up to that point, I saw women a certain way. 
I had I had a, 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 a single grandmother with five kids, five kids, four different dudes. And <laughs> so granny was the 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 hammer in the family. Right. My my mother's two sisters, one of them who had happened to be the youngest, she's the the hammer. <laughs> you know, in, in their generation. She's straight shooter, straight. I love her to death, man. Um, but we had these these really, really solid, dominant women in our family. And being in a household with my mom, she was a little more, she was a little softer than those two. But in the house, she she felt like she told me this um, later on when I was an adult. She told me, she said she felt like she had to be a certain way because I was a boy. Okay, I get that. Mm -hmm. um, so she ruled with an iron fist. So anyway, so I said that to say those women shaped how I saw women, right? It was like so, and 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 the men, my uncles, were, were some dope cats, right? My stepfather was a dope cat. I didn't appreciate him till later on, but that's another story. Well, they were some dope cats, and one thing that. I saw this, oh, and even the pastor of our church when I was growing up, grew up Pentecostal, even the pastor of our church was a woman, right? So I didn't, wasn't no big deal about women having uh, authority or control, wasn't no big deal. I'm just like, oh, I see that shit all the time. Shit, even in my household growing up. But when I saw my mother with my stepdad, and this dude didn't even live with us for, for most of the time, until I thought I was going off to college. Um, but he used to come and visit because he lived in Birmingham, just like an hour away. Um, he used to come and visit. So the weekends, he was in, he was there in the house. She was a different woman. Mm -hmm. Changed my whole narrative about this dominant woman. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that works for them. And then I started peeping out my, my, my uncles and my aunt. So the other, my, my dominant figure of aunt, mm -hmm. Once I start unpacking conversation with her about her relationship with my uncle, she would say, oh yeah, I'm X, Y, and Z. But when he say, that's it, oh, that's it. You know, my cousins had, had some health issues, but my uncle worked still plant. <laughs> he made good money. My aunt didn't have to work. She did for, you know, she made a little side money or whatever, but he took care of everything she wanted a new car she got a new car they had their own house uh, she wanted another house she wanted a house they ain't want neighbors so he bought a property or they it was a house and they do they tore their house down it was their whole property right he provided like a motherfucker right so and he was protected when shit when our house got robbed when we was in the uh, projects he showed up my mom called him he showed up with his tech nine it was like i got you you know so he was, a, you know what I'm saying? That was that dude. If you wasn't paying attention, you would say, you know, with my aunt, with how she got down, you would say, oh, well, she run that house. Nah, man, as a kid, you see one thing, but as an adult, really got to dig into it and ask these questions and examine, you know, these are influences in your life that bring you where you are and who you are. Mm -hmm. And to see them together, change to, to ask the questions and have the conversation with her change how I saw relationship mm -hmm. and then seeing my mother you know um, really change how I saw roles in the household so I'm gonna stop there and catch my breath <laughs> no nah, that's dope man um you don't mind me asking go ahead you said your grandmama yeah had yeah four by three she had Five by four. Five by four. So, um, was Grandma Chasing Streetwood? Bro, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> when you come to the realization that Grandma was for the streets. Apparently. Before she, before she got saved. Before she became mother. <laughs> Not your mother Johnson before with the granny, white hat on. Before Granny got saved, before man. she got her spot in the third row. <laughs> she was for the streets. 
<laughs> oh, and, that's messed up. You know what? No, that's, it, a, that's a man and shit and, right and there. And I'm gonna tell you, and I'm gonna tell you, that's a that's a real question because I I hit my crack my mom about that. I was like, hey man, four dudes, huh? I got, <laughs> I got it on my side too. That's what I like. <laughs> oh, grandma, you was fast when I was like, Yeah, grandma, yeah. grandma was getting it in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For you, was Mother Thomas. She was loose lip Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. Oh. Man. <clears throat> oh man. I cool, 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 cool. It should be illegal to have as much fun. It should be. It should be, and put it on film so everybody can see it. All right, cool. So, um, <clears throat> the, the the next influence, as I think about. Um, uh, my manhood, my my connection to relationships was, I was a nerdy kid growing up. I was a nerdy, you know, growing up in Alabama. I'm the dark skinned kid, so I get nothing but all. I, I done heard every, damn near every dark skinned joke. But you keep coming up with new ones that it's I was a, like- It's a talent. <laughs> <laughs> For example, fingerprints on charcoal. Bro, that's, that's classic. Yeah. <laughs> Which my That's the name of his fantasy football, football team yeah. now to this day. <laughs> to this, I like, won't change yeah, it. Yeah, I was like, that boy put fingerprints on charcoal. I won't change Get it. Get out That's... the car and the oil light come on. <laughs> so, <laughs> so not only was I the dark kid, I was the nerdy kid with the glasses. So I was that kid. Right. right? You so, still nerdy, you just took your glasses off. <clears throat> well, to that point, in 10th grade, um, I was out here actually, uh, came to live with my dad as I should have, you know, in high school. <clears throat> and uh, I was going to Spritos High School and uh, I got contacts that year. I got contacts the summer before I started school. Oh man, you know what I'm saying? I was, on, I was a new kid on campus. I was on the hoop squad on JV. JV or the 10th grade squad? I think it was on the 10th grade squad. Uh, they ain't know me enough to get on JV, so. But anyway. He come play. Go ahead. Hey, Ross, top scorer though. You know what I'm saying? That, yeah. Tall midget nigga. <laughs> that was a I tall was the, midget. I, I was the top scorer on the 10th grade, grade squad. Team. <laughs> Good night, Cleveland. <laughs> Mid- <laughs> he, he's got a million. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, million. man. Go ahead. Go ahead. You got a million. Go ahead. I, I, I scored 12 <laughs> points a game. So, um, so, Things change, right? So they didn't know me, right? You know, I was barely handsome cat, right? I thought, you know, I guess, but I didn't have that type of confidence yet. Mm-hmm. Um, then I started getting some attention, you know, and it was kind of cool. Things shifted. I'm like, I'm the same motherfucker, right? I just don't have glasses anymore. I'm the same personality, same looks, you know, same dress, how I affect, how I got down, but. You know, now I got into girls, right? And then, I don't know, I, I think it was like, at that point, my, the, 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 the novelty was off. I was like, man, I done been hanging around you. Man, my cousin, uh, my first cousin at the crib, uh, is super handsome dude, right? All the chicks dug. So they would talk to me, try to get close to him. So I had, I had an opportunity to talk to some fly ass chicks mm-hmm. with nothing on the table. So that kind of built my confidence. So by the time, you know what I'm saying, I it was me, I had no problem talking to fly chicks. I was like, oh, oh, these chicks are crazy anyway. So uh-uh. you, you got a question. Uh-uh. <laughs> we've, we've been boys for a long time. Some stuff just connected in my head. <laughs> I got it. Uh, the talking, the, the yeah, you know yeah, yes. <laughs> yes. Now it's connected. Now, now it makes sense. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. Right. <laughs> so. Call your ass secondhand smoke. <laughs> that's what he is, old secondhand smoke, nigga. Oh man. <laughs> and so, and then, what fucked up our generation, and and I'm a part of that is the love songs of the '80s and '90s. Um, uh, what Babyface, um, all them cats messed it up mm-hmm. for our generation. Uh, I'll pay your rent, 
I'll buy your clothes. I'll cook your dinner too as soon as I get home from work. Um, I, I do everything your man won't do. Well, you know, you, but on the flip side of it, you, you should give a lot of credit to Guy because you're an Aaron Hall looking man. <laughs> hey, big ups to the dark skinned dudes. You know so, what I'm saying? That what they come out, 90? Dude. You got a, yeah, <laughs> about 89, 90. He was on a hell of a run. A hell of a run. You know, actually, um, actually, Big Daddy King. Oh, uh, that's help good. me out. Omar Epps, you know, helped me out on my run. So, you know, so well, he ain't too, but you know. Uh, yeah, but Big Daddy Kane was a big, big part of that. And the Black Power music of the time, you know. X Clan. X Clan. Freedom or death. <laughs> we shall all be moved. Van Glorious. <laughs> um, so, yeah, man. So, the music of the day, Paris, uh, uh, you know, Public Enemy all that so all this was happening at the same time you had black power the, the, the love songs dominated by mostly guys were well, the ones that were dominated by mostly guys were simp shit mm -hmm. so yeah i was a simp i ended up being a simp for a little and that kind of fucked up my relationship so i i can reflect back and say my early relationships were shitty because mm -hmm. i was simp Yeah, I'm going to pause right there. No, nah, I caught you on the tail end of that simping. That's when we became friends. <laughs> this nigga was r and <laughs> like, Damn, we made a whole love song over here. Hey, man, we talking about, you know, take the chick out. We talking about flowers. We talking about, you know, the whole nine. I mean, everything. Side note, just a quick side note. So, uh my daughter has a guy that liked her right likes her and so her mom i don't give too much you know personal stuff but her mom was like well he should i know kids that have brought flowers and did this and i was like you know eighth ninth graders bringing flowers what are you talking about right and so we was having a conversation i like, know you want to be respected you want to be treated uh, uh, with dignity, you know, you want him to be interested in you. Uh, it's like, forget all the flowers and all that crap, right? And then I, I, it hit me of the training, right, that we go through, right? Like, this is the way to be. So I was having, I was telling my mom the story. And my mom was like, oh, flowers are nice. And da -da -da -da. I was like, did my daddy give you flowers on the first date? She was like, nope. <laughs> I was like, I was <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? Right. I was like, the dude you married isn't that dude. <laughs> Had two kids by. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, anyway, I just it just hit me. I was like, anyway. Anyway. Written, so, by, written by Disney. Right. 